Hello everybody, this is a study guide video for topics in chapters 33 through 36. We're going to be talking about things from the Cold War all the way about all the way up to the Taliban. So if you're wondering what topics are going to be important, the Korean War and the Vietnam War, both are two Cold War conflicts. And the big reason the Korean War started was when the communist North Koreans attacked the democratic South Koreans and the United States and the UN wanted to stop the spread of communism. Vietnam War. The um, North Vietnamese communists were trying to dominate the South Vietnamese and spread communism. The United States got involved to stop the spread of communism in Asia. That was one of the big things. Also, the partition of India. When India was partitioned, violence broke out in 1947 between Hindus and Muslims. That was after the partition of India. Next, you'll take a look at a map, and it will show Palestine when it was a British mandate up until 1948. And you'll see the land amount of the Jewish settlements were very small when uh, Palestine was British mandate. Then the United Nations partition, and after the different conflicts, you're gonna see that the land that Israel now occupies and runs is totally increased, and there's very little room for the Palestinians. Next, the Chinese Communist Revolution and the Cuban Revolution are similar that both revolutions gained strong support from the peasants and the poor. Castro in Cuba and Mao in China got the support of the peasants. Now, which situation was a result of the other three? The Green Revolution was the result of agricultural output being increased, crops were grown more efficiently, and chemical pesticides are used to increase agricultural output. The result is the Green Revolution. That was the big thing. Next, which statement describes Gandhi's response to British imperialism? We know that Mohandas Gandhi was peaceful, he was nonviolent, and he followed a policy of non cooperation, and he did boycotts of all British goods. You will take a look at a chart that says interactions between the United States of America and the Soviet Union. And you'll notice in 1948, the Soviets launched a blockade in Germany. And in 1962, U.S. spy planes discover Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba, leading to the Cuban Missile Crisis. And then in 1979, that was about Soviet troops invade Afghanistan. And... The big thing characteristic by this is uh, conflicts occur. And the Soviets and the United States were both looking to influence countries, governments around the world. Next, you'll read these headlines. African National Congress, ANC demands repeal of the pass law. Bishop Desmond Tutu awarded the Nobel Peace Prize and Nelson Mandela released from prison after serving 27 years. All these events, all these events show the strength of the protest against the South African government's policy of apartheid. Next, the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan. They were all U.S. policies to contain and stop the spread of communism. You will see a political cartoon with Mikhail Gorbachev standing over a shattered sickle and hammer, the symbol of the Soviet Union. And this is going to represent a deteriorating Soviet economy and the republics of the Soviet Union wanted to leave. They wanted to secede. And it's basically symbolizing the breakup of Soviet communist countries in Soviet Russia. What areas were separated by the Iron Curtain? Well, the Iron Curtain was a phrase coined by Winston Churchill. And it was separating Eastern Europe from Western Europe. Basically, communist Europe from democratic Europe. Now, you'll see a political cartoon that says the Dang Memorial, and democracy is a statue that has crashed and crumbled, and it's bleeding, and it's right in front of the Forbidden City in China. This is going to symbolize the communist crackdown on protesters in Tiananmen Square, 
and the end of peaceful protests. Next, a comparison of the five-year plans of Joseph Stalin and the Great Leap Forward by Mao Zedong, which show that both leaders focused on increasing industrial and agricultural outputs in their communist countries. Now, an organization and campaigns in South Africa against the policy of racial separation and segregation are most closely associated with Nelson Mandela. He fought the apartheid laws in South Africa. Next, one reason Mao Zedong, Ho Chi Minh, and Fidel Castro rose to power is these leaders gained support of the peasants and their communist ideology um, helped them you know, get the support of the peasants. Next, if you see OPEC or OPEC meets to discuss production restrictions, European Union threatens sanctions against non-members in China granted most favored nation status by the United States. Um, this is just basically showing interdependence, that nations have to work together politically and economically. One way in which the withdrawal of Belgium control, the withdrawal of Belgium control in Rwanda and the fall of communism in Yugoslavia are similar, is they both led directly to ethnic conflict. Seven. The next question, Nelson Mandela and Aung San Suu Kyi are closely associated with movements to guarantee rights and liberties of people in their countries. Which factor was a major consideration at the time India was being partitioned? The big thing that came into partition in India was three, tensions between Hindus and Muslims. That's what caused the British to uh, create Pakistan as a Muslim Homeland, Pakistan, East and West, and India for Hindus primarily. Next, you'll see a political cartoon that says home, Afghanistan, and there's a pipeline coming from Pakistan, and out of that pipeline are Taliban fighters. And you have a tank with a soldier looking back. Hello, Next, you'll see many conflicts in the Middle East during the post-World War II period have directly resulted from disputes related to Palestine. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to see you. Watch this as many times as you need to.